All right, so this should be a short video on how you can run Docker containers on Chromebooks. In my case, it's actually a Dell Latitude that uh, had Windows installed on it and I turned it into a Chromebook so we could make it a coffee shop computer. Um, so you can run Crustini, which will let you run a Docker, I'm sorry, a Linux container, an LXC container, and then you can run Docker inside of that and you can run all kinds of interesting things. So I'm actually, this should be interesting to see how this works. I'm actually using Chrome Remote Desktop to run this demo real quick. So this is actually the screen for the Chromebook and you can see I'm running the Chrome Remote Desktop app. And, and then in the browser I'm in, I'm actually, which you can't see right here, I'm just running the Chrome Remote Desktop plugin to connect to this thing. So what is this really gonna look like? Um, let me scroll down. So when you run um, Docker, basically when you, when you run a Chromebook, so it's regular Chromebook, blah, blah, blah. If you enable uh, Linux beta support, you actually end up running a Penguin, a container called Penguin um, inside of the Termina VM. And then what we're gonna do is since that's in a computer complete, um, Debian system, we're going to run Docker, install Docker in it, and then run um, Docker Compose up. And I'll bring up a couple of related nodes to each other and private networks and all that. So if you go to this wiki page, you can actually see what that looks like. So the install, I'm actually using um, Neverware's Cloud Ready. So this is actually software that you can install on a lot of laptops and desktops. It's great if you just want a Chromebook for um, you know, just to make it easy for everybody and you don't want to be doing Windows patches and all that kind of stuff. And the Linux operating system is just weird to a lot of people like they're at my family. I'm not going to give a Linux operating system to. So what I did first is I just removed Docker on this thing. And then I installed Docker by adding it as a repo and then just doing a apt install. And then I made the Docker command. You make the Docker command runnable by doing these commands you can make it runnable without being root. So that way, if you're just whatever Chrome user ID you are, you can run stuff. And then the easiest way to verify this once you've installed it is really to just run Docker PS to see the command and then run Docker hello world. And that should just print out hello world, right? So if we go over to the other screen real quick, so this is, I'm actually here, I'm in a terminal window. So you can see here, I've got a terminal running. If you, um, once you install the Linux, subsystem, you end up with Linux apps and terminals, the default one. So, um, and then I have Visual Studio installed because I install that Visual Studio code because I install that pretty much anywhere. Okay, so we should be able to, oop. Yay. So when you install Docker on Unix, on Linux, you actually get the hell world, hello world image. So you can see that actually works. So in my case, I actually have this Anaconda. I wanted to show that the GUI, like I have a web app, right? So if you wanted to do like a Jupyter notebook and learn to do Python and do Python, you can either do it in the command line or you could use your Visual Studio or you could just do the, the whole data scientist thing and do the notebook. So here, I'm gonna sit CD into the Anaconda directory and you can see I've just, this is a GitHub repo. There'll be a link on the video. So in this case, we're just gonna do Docker compose up. Oh, right, it's running the install. So Anaconda actually does an install of additional updates. So the first time you actually log into a Jupyter Notebook on this, you can see that it's actually gonna be local. It's gonna be this, right? So that actually did a copy operation in the terminal. When you highlight it, as soon as you highlight text, you wait two seconds, it'll actually copy it for you. So if I were to come over here and put this in and change the IP to be localhost. We're actually in a Jupyter notebook. So you can see I actually ran some Python code here before. Um, well, I don't think I did much. Did I do anything? Yeah, so I played with some sample. And so this is Jupyter notebook running in a Docker container on a Chromebook. The version of Docker Compose that comes with it is with Cloud Ready is um, a little bit of an older version. So I just un 
And so my uh, Docker Compose files wouldn't work. So I just removed the Docker Compose, reinstalled it, and boom. So you can actually do a lot with this, pretty much. And you could actually use Visual Studio and connect to these containers. I'll probably do that in a different one. Um, and like I said, it's kind of cool because what they did was they took whatever Docker containers you did here, which become exposed on the Penguin um, contain, uh, container, really. They made that Ethernet be visible as localhost to the browser that's sitting at the top level. So that's it. I hope that was interesting. And if not, don't leave a comment.